slowly declared war on Russia, and the first shots were fired. Today, here in the United Kingdom, we have mobilized, mobilized the Royal Navy for the battle ahead. It is with a heavy heart that I must inform this House that yesterday, Germany declared war on France. And today, Germany has invaded Belgium. Your government has therefore had no choice, and Great Britain is now at war with Germany. Our brothers and sisters in the Empire are rallying to our cause, and with their help, we are sure that this dreadful war will be over by Christmas. Yay! I was only 18, didn't weigh much, but I was hungry. Eleven pound, and I certainly didn't look like a soldier, but I passed. I was given a parcel of food, a railway warrant, and instructed to report to the officer at New Haven. Six o'clock, there was such a noise outside, and the fellow blew a trumpet. We got up, and that was his bottom address, and the sergeant called out, Come on, you lot, fall in! We didn't know where to fall into, couldn't have seen what we did. We embarked at 6 p.m. that evening. Same all through the night, pitch black, with all sorts of thoughts crowding in on our brains. To relieve the monotony, I started with a sing song with songs from the shows, and we sang all through the night and kept our spirits up in that way. Private Pokes is a funny little codger with a smile, a funny smile. Five foot nut, he's an artful little dodger with a smile, a sunny smile. Flush or broke, he'll have his little joke, he can't be suppressed. All the other fellows have to grin when he gets this off his chest. Hey! Continue day and night for 
two days and two nights. We were out on our feet. Our losses had been really heavy, and we were losing men daily along the road to exhaustion. We were in full retreat. We'd sang, we played penny whistles, we played mouth organs, we made endless fun of anybody we could. In fact, anything to keep our minds off the tires and the constant tramp of sore feet. Directions we laid down and fired as fast and hard as possible. You couldn't. Here at Mons, the battlefield is unbelievable. Heaps of corpses, French and German lying everywhere. The rain has started. Shells are screaming and bursting. The artillery spot is the worst. When the noise stops, we hear the wounded screaming in the woods. Two or three men go mad every day.
the Germans finally gave up, the British troops were literally at their last gasp, but the Germans didn't know it, and for the moment, Ypres was saved. Right, special Christmas break, Hey, will be on its way to France. My help? No, Charlie. I don't want your sticky fingers in the mixture. Well, what can I do then? What about some jokes? They can make their own crackers. Something to make them laugh and smile on Christmas Day. Oh, and they can laugh on the way. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. No, That's a good one. That's a good one. That's a really funny one. They're brilliant. I've got the things for our brother's package. Can you check them all off? Okay, I think we've got them all. Candles and matches? Check. Socks? Extra thick bunny was. No warts, cold toes. Chocolate? I put in no far Christmas bars. I think you'll need them more than we will. I don't know, look at pencils, so you can write to us. I hope this Christmas isn't too gloomy. Later on, we received presents from the Queen Mary of a pipe and tobacco and a Christmas card from the King! My regiment, the 133rd Royal Saxon Regiment, were in trenches face to face with the Scottish Seaforth Highlanders. Like us, they were up to their knees in mud. My company commander and I, same in unaccustomed calm, <coughs> sat with our men around a little Christmas tree that we had put up in our dugout. Next morning, as the mist slowly cleared, my orderly threw himself into my dugout to say that the German and Scottish soldiers were fraternising. Well, I grabbed my binoculars and witnessed the incredible sight of our soldiers exchanging snaps, cigarettes and chocolate with the enemy. Red Cross 
and the Belgium Soldiers Club. Oh, yeah. <laughs> to get this concert off to a first class start, I'm delighted to introduce our lovely ladies of song, Messrs. Nelly and Gertrude Purfle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please give them a warm welcome. Yeah. <laughs> Never believe me. She never believed 
amongst the lush green grass, chamomile and poppies grew in great profusion. Through chamomile and poppies, the soldiers made their way to the line. Through chamomile and poppies, they made their way back to the Greek rest. Through chamomile and poppies were born the wounded. Their bandages were white, splashed with scarlet, like the flowers themselves.
Within two hours, and together with our Canadian allies, we have taken 2,000 prisoners. And the army has gained all of its objectives. These tanks have transformed the whole character of this war, and already the prisoners are saying that Germany is kaput.
Repatriation, and in case anyone should ever forget the sacrifice that had been made by so many of our countrymen, a proposal was made that the body of an unidentified British soldier should be exhumed in France and should be buried with full military honours in Westminster Abbey. A plain stone would be laid to mark the grave on which the words the unknown warrior were engraved. And each year, on the Sunday nearest to November the 11th, a ceremony would take place at the Cenotaph in Whitehall and throughout the country. Dear unknown soldier, I'm in Cannington, Cornwall. Maybe you know. Maybe you walk the same streets as I did. It's unknown. Maybe you're my great granddad. It's unknown. Hundred years of people walking over your grave and not knowing who you are. The family will remember you as a brave soldier who went to war and never returned. So do not think that you are forgotten. People may walk past you and not lay an eye on you. But don't you worry, the world is imperfect. The unknown soldier, forever remembered. Roger, the world is now complex. Why is there a stone complex? There are also things. You stand over as a reminder of your terrible era. Although your name may have been forgotten, your actions will be remembered. You represent the sacrifice every soldier made. You represent the country you fought for. You represent freedom. And for that, we thank you. You may be unknown now, but you are not unknown to your friends and family. The struggle you went through will become increasingly difficult to remember, but perhaps that is a struggle for us to fight today. We know the atrocities of the First World War, and I can only wonder if people would do such a heroic thing today. You may have lost, 
but your country did not. May you rest in peace. What is the last thing you saw when you left home? When you arrived in France, what did you notice first? Which is the hour you most hate. Part of the day is best. What do you like best about England? Would you do it again? What would you say to those who come after you? How would you like to be remembered? How, what didn't we understand? What questions should we ask? What is your name? What is your name? What is your name? Thanksgiving, a mother for her children. England mourns for her dead across the sea. Flesh of her flesh they were, spirit of her spirit, fallen in the cause of the free. Solemn the drums thrill. Death, august and royal, sings sorrow up into immortal spheres. There is music in the midst of desolation and a glory that shines upon our tears. They went with songs to the battle. They were young, straight of limb, true of eye, steady and aglow. They were staunch to the end against odds uncounted. They fell with their faces to the foe. They shall grow not old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. They mingle not with laughing comrades again. They sit no more at familiar tables of home. They have no lot in our labor of the daytime. They sleep beyond England's foam. But, where our desires are and our hopes profound, felt as a wellspring that is hidden from sight, to the innermost heart of their own land they are known, as the stars are known to the night. As the stars that shall be bright when we are dust, moving in marches upon the heavenly plain, as the stars that are starry in the time of our darkness. To the end, to the end, they remain.